just do my thing, do my thing. Oh, you keep hanging. I'm just do my, just do my, just do my, just do my thing. Oh, you keep hanging. So I give you solutions, not just here's the problem, but I give you solutions. Welcome everyone to Get Healthy the Winter's Way. I am Sharon Winters, author of The Pure Cure, A Complete Guide to Freeing Your Life of Dangerous Toxins, which is 20 chapters of areas of concern that we all need to take a look at and solutions. And my whole show is based on bringing in experts in all the different fields that I have chapters on. And what we're going to talk about today is a very serious subject about electromagnetic smog. You know, it is one of the major causes of health concerns in this country. It is odorless, tasteless, invisible, and it is everywhere. Cell phones, Wi-Fi, towers, radar, computers. No matter where we go today, we are surrounded by this electromagnetic smog. So I have brought in as a special guest, you will be amazed at this information. His name is Orm Miller, and he is a building biologist. So welcome, Orm. Thank you, Sharon, for having me on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. So I have a question for you. Sure. For those out there, what is a building biologist? <laughs> building biologists are uh, people who have taken training from the International Institute for Bow Biology and Ecology in Clearwater, Florida, here in this country and in Europe, uh, in uh, techniques for evaluating and uh, mitigating or uh, repairing sources of toxicity in homes and offices. And they include indoor air quality issues like mold, chemical outgassing, uh, natural gas, carbon monoxide, radon, lead, asbestos, uh, as well as uh, recommendations on new building materials to avoid outgassing and mold and these problems. And then the whole area of electromagnetic fields, which you uh, mentioned, and besides the wireless devices that you mentioned, there are also electromagnetic fields from house wiring as well. So uh, we have training uh, from the Institute. Uh, Bau biology um, is the German word for building biology. Bau, B-A-U, is the German word for building or home. And biologie is the German pronunciation of our word uh, in the English language of biology. So there's a whole training that goes along with, yes. with being a building biologist. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so, you get certified, and it's a whole certification? Uh, w yeah, internally within the profession, right. And, uh, and so. is it done in the United States? Or do they yes. have a lot of it here? It is. It's done in the United States? Well, yes, but the person who founded this Was institute is in a German Germany. fellow, who, uh, an architect who came to this country 25 or so years ago, Married, met and married an American woman, and um, he founded the International Institute for Bio Biology and Ecology. That's, that's, that's his name. He came uh, up with that name. Uh, 25 years ago, we celebrated the 25th anniversary one year ago, so it's now been 26 years. And unfortunately, after having suffered a stroke about five years ago, he made it through the celebration that we had for him a year ago, uh, uh, celebrating the 25th anniversary in October of uh, last year, 2012, in Washington, D.C., and then he passed away in January of this year. Mm. But uh, he, he'll, he's sorely missed, but we uh, are so grateful for the I work bet. that he did to uh, promote this profession in this country. But bio, bio, bio biology, as it's known in Europe from Germany, is very um, strong and alive there and in Australia and in New Zealand and here in, in uh, the U.S. and Canada. So we have practitioners all over the world who go to people's homes to evaluate them for these sources of toxicity. And I know you have a website, but where, where would somebody go? They can just uh, to, okay. to, to, find, to find it. What is your website, by the way? My website is uh, www.createhealthyhomes.com. And that's all one word, and homes is plural. So it's createhealthyhomes.com. The website for the uh, institute here in America, in Florida, is uh, hbelc.org. And that stands for Healthy Building Learning Environmental Center, but it's hbelc.org. Huh. So let me ask you a question. 
what are e and emfs and where are they found in people's homes do people realize that is everybody's home have emfs yes but not everyone is sensitive to the EMFs. Not everyone is affected by them in terms of their health, and I'll get into that in a minute. But electromagnetic fields um, come from four sources, and, and the, those initials stand for electromagnetic fields. Uh, and when people hear that term, they think about magnetic fields, and they think about a, a Gauss meter. Actually, this particular brand of meter measures uh, all three, magnetic, electric, and radio waves, Although, as a side note, as far as we're concerned in the building biology profession, with all due respect to the manufacturer of this meter, the electric field and radio frequency settings don't give you readings that are, um, it's not sensitive enough in our opinion. Uh, you can have a zero reading on this and still have uh, what we consider in the building biology profession to be harmful levels of electric and, mag uh, and radio frequency fields. But as a magnetic field Gauss meter, uh, it, it does just uh, quite fine or quite well. Um, and this is another example of a Gauss meter. So people will measure magnetic fields with this, mm -hmm. and they'll, if they don't find any in a particular room, they'll say, well, we can move on. We haven't found any EMFs in this room. But they've missed the other type of EMFs, types of EMFs that exist. And so besides magnetic fields from house wiring uh, and overhead power lines, we also have electric fields from building wiring, from the wires in your wall, like this Romex wiring, the plastic wiring, or this metal clad wiring in some homes and buildings. The third type of uh, EMF uh, would be all of the wireless devices that you mentioned. Uh, so, you know, cell phones, uh, uh, cordless uh, phones, the electronic tablets, um, uh, laptops, routers. Uh, these all generate, uh, they, they, they both transmit and receive wireless frequencies. So that's a whole category in, in and of itself. And then the last category is so-called dirty electricity, which are harmonic frequencies, high frequencies um, that are harmonics of a fundamental frequency. And they're produced by dimmer switches, that is the newer electronic dimmer switches we've, we have in our homes for the last 30 years, uh, compact fluorescent lamps, or, or these compact, compact fluorescent light bulbs, some halogen fixtures, uh, also switch mode power supplies that you find in uh, computers and printers and uh, according to some individuals, uh, certain models of uh, smart meters. So these are sources of, of, smart, of dirty electricity and that's technically the fourth type of right. EMF. So I know you came, I, you came to my home. Right. <laughs> what a surprise. I was really afraid to have you in my home. Um, we, we did a uh, show together. We did the Conscious Life Expo. We were on a panel of experts. And when right. I heard... Here in, in Los Angeles it, at the LAX Hilton right. last February, we right. were on a so panel. It took, with it took me about 10 months to get up the courage to have him because I went, oh my God, he's going to come into my home and I'm going to have to get rid of everything. But, and, but aren't you glad that you had me come? I'm so glad. Because? <laughs> because... First of all, I feel so much better when, when we found out what was going on in my home. So now you know. Now I know because knowledge is power. And, but I thought you were going to take away my TV and all this stuff. And, no, and there, then, there's a lot of misconceptions. And right, we, we, I understand we fixed that. Uh, many of the problems that right. you had. And, and my computer, I couldn't be on my computer for more than 20 minutes without feeling drained. And now you've set it up. And I have no problem. I can stay on my computer for a long period of time, and it does not affect me. And that's because you used um, the, the way that you had your laptop plugged into the outlet used only a two-pronged, uh, sorry, it, it was a two-pronged plug just like this, not a three-pronged plug like this. This is the ground. And that's the prong. grounding. And, and the way you had it set up with your computer it was only two prongs, and so it was, un it was ungrounded. And when you put your hand on that laptop, uh, you had high electric fields, which <sighs> drained your energy. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Plus, it's we turned off the, um, the Wi-Fi there and set up a, a remote it, uh, network extender. We actually got in the car and went to Fry's uh, and picked up. The uh, I was extender. on. I was on overwhelm. I go. I, I don't even know. So he says, "I'll take you to Fry's." So he actually yeah. went to Fry's with me. And and we picked I, it off the shelf and made sure it didn't have any Wi-Fi in it, and then right. plugged that in. So you have an internet signal through the electrical wires of the house from your office where your router is, 
and then you plug this other uh, network extender mm -hmm. into an outlet right near in the kitchen where you like to sit, right. and then an Ethernet cable from that, plugging it into your computer, and then you turn off the Wi-Fi on the computer, and there's no smoke. And it, it, it's amazing. And then we went into my bedroom. And what did you find there? Oh, my God. Well, uh, we, found, uh, we found high electric fields. In fact, we found exorbitantly high electric fields because of a, of a particular uh, healing uh, mat that you have on your uh, bed that you leave plugged in with a two-pronged ungrounded plug. And I think you said that you, you do that so that, well, you can explain, so that you can easily use it in the morning without having to right. Well, I, it use it, I use it, it's a pulse magnetic frequency type of mat, so right. I use it the first thing in the morning, first thing in the evening, but now what I, what I do is I unplug it. But that I'm, was plugged in that while was you were sleeping. While I was a sleeping. A few feet from, from, it was on the other side of the bed. Right. And so that produced an, exor an exceedingly high electric field level, uh, many times higher than I usually see. Right. And the normal amount that I see is agitating enough but this was really preventing you from getting deep stage four sleep every 90 minutes right. in the sleep cycles. And, th and that's so important. And not much melatonin production. And then the electricity that was going, the EMFs that were going above my head and beyond, because that's where in, all, all the, the uh, uh, electrical outlets, electrical wiring is in my home, is, is above my head and, and behind me. Because your breaker panel, as is the case out here in California, is on the outside of the house and right outside your bedroom wall. Not, out, not right opposite the head of your bed, but um, maybe 10 feet away right. on the back side of the house. And so you have plastic wires, as I recall, in your house. So you were getting electric fields coming into the room through that. And then secondly, you had a wiring error, right? That, so that when you had uh, the light on in the kitchen and the, the, all the circuits that, uh, that go into the house come from the breaker panel and go, as you said, in the... Uh, wall and ceiling above your bed to go to every other location in the house. And when the lights were turned on in the kitchen, you had um, an unequal current between the current on the, the black hot wire versus the white neutral wire. Right. And some of that current was coming back on another path. So you had an electrician come and he fixed that, right? And it, it, it's so simple. First of all, he went outside, he found out what, what circuit I needed to shut off. And so for the first eight or nine days before the electrician came, I'd have to go out uh, and turn off that circuit breaker at night. And then the, circuit, then, then the electrician came and he just put in a plug, a, a, a switch that looks like a normal switch and I shut that off. And I have to tell you, Orm, it's, it's just amazing. I'm sleeping better. I have more energy. Great. And I feel better. I'm, I'm not so so wired, excuse the pun, but right, right. not so wired from it. I, I hear that uh, a lot. And if people go to my website, createhealthyhomes.com, and click on comments from clients, you will see a whole list of uh, comments that I've posted there from people who send emails to me and I said, can I put this on my website with just your initials? I say, sure, that's fine. So I, I actually front loaded all the um, comments that have to do with sleep to the top of the list and I have more to add. I just so that's my next question is we don't realize how much EMFs affect our health. Right. Right, they do. We, we don't, be, and they are the really the invisible toxins, uh, because we don't realize how much it is affecting us in, in health ways. And if you're electrically sensitive, that's a really good thing because because you're aware of it. But for those people that are not electrical, electrically sensitive, it's they're, more detrimental because they're not realizing that they're they're getting it. It's just kind of like gluten. Gluten isn't good for anybody to eat, and, and because of what we've hybridized gluten. But uh, and so many people are are sensitive to gluten. But even if you're not sensitive to gluten, you know it's not a good idea to be eating it today because of what we've done to to, to wheat. So it's the same thing with EMFs. Right. Right. Um, the analogy that I use for my clients is to think of themselves as uh, smoking cigarettes, as we did in, uh, well, not me, but you know, as people did, <laughs> still do today, but, but to a great degree in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, back in those days, not everyone who smoked became ill. Right. You know, that's an established fact. But still, a certain group did, and they're very... Uh, uh, they became uh, quite symptomatic, 
Uh, there's a clear connection that was established then between their illness and the use of the cigarettes. But it took many years for um, uh, you know the government and, and the tobacco companies to, to get to the point where restrictions were implemented um, and, and uh, uh, educational programs and then even uh, money set aside for the care of the people who were affected by this from a, you know, from a health standpoint. We are at that same point now as a country and as a world as we were 50, 60 years ago with that particular uh, issue. And, and I have a lot to tell you. Uh, coming up to well, we're we're going to so, take a break. Okay. Sure. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Get Healthy the Winter's Way. Stay tuned. We're back with Get Healthy the Winter's Way. I'm Sharon Winters. My book is called The Pure Cure, Complete Guide to Freeing Your Life from Dangerous Toxins. And my guest today is the fabulous Orm Miller, a building biologist. So I want to share why I wrote the book. Why I wrote the book is because my life partner for 12 years, who was one of the healthiest people I've ever met, um, got brain cancer, a glioblastoma. He was on the cell phone for seven, eight hours a day. Did the doctors ever say what side the glioblastoma was on? Yeah, it was on the right side, and and, and that's exactly where he held the phone. And uh, they gave him four months. Uh, He lasted for almost two years. I took him out of the country. I took him to Germany. And I cannot tell you how many people that I met that had brain cancer, and I, I would ask him that same question. What side? Of the head. Did you use a cell phone? Did you use a cell phone? And 100% of the time, it's they said the the side of the head was 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 where they got the brain cancer, and it was really interesting because Wilk, which was his name, Wilk Wilkinson, um, after he had his brain surgery, he could never put the phone to his head again. He said he could feel it. He could feel it. When I give lectures, I ask the peop- people in the audience to raise their hands if they feel a warmth when right. they put the cell phone next to their head, and half the hands go up. Right. But the thing is, um, it is the case that the government regulatory agencies in this country and around the world uh, and, and the industry points to research that was done, I believe, in the military uh, in the 50s and 60s, 70s, uh, that only... Um, took into account the heating effects of 
radio frequencies on cells. And when, that, uh, when you take that into account, there's a certain threshold below which you can still measure the presence of these waves. And we have uh, radio frequency uh, meters and devices that do that. Uh, and and you, can, you can measure the presence of these radio frequencies in terms of the thermal effects and, and the radio wave strength. But it's below what is known today as the specific absorption rate, the SAR. Right. And the SAR for the United States is 1.6 watts of energy per kilogram of body mass. And a watt is a unit of energy. So the government has established that limit. And all the cell phone companies know and, and they, that's the law. They, they can't sell a cell phone that uh, puts out more energy than that. Right. But the way it's measured is very controversial. Uh, they use a, a, a dummy, a, a gel-filled uh, head and, and dummy um, that simulates a 200-pound male. So they're not uh, taking into account the fact that children are smaller and have thinner skulls uh, and sometimes not even formed as bone yet. Uh, and so that's a big controversy. But here's the interesting part of this. And uh, it turns out that there are two components to the wave that uh, you have from, from wireless devices. When the milit according to uh, the uh, research that I've read and, and uh, experts on this who spoke to our profession a few years ago at one of our conferences, uh, Dr. George Carlo, he led the um, seven or eight year study that was commissioned by the cell phone trade industry and the Department of Health, Education and Welfare in the early years of the Clinton administration in 1991 or so. And he told us that his research showed that there was uh, an influence of, uh, from wireless devices at levels far below the safe threshold based on just the heating effects. So what they did in, in years past, not in his research, but um, earlier, uh, they, they turned up a radio transmitter next to a cage with um, laboratory animals. And when they saw coagulation or burning of the components of the cell, uh, you know, the protein synthesis and so on, that's when they said the safe, safe threshold had been breached and they said anything above this point is unsafe. Well, that makes sense, except for the fact that they blew past these lower levels and didn't pay attention to other non-heating, non-thermal effects that also occur. They mm. just disregarded them. They weren't looking for them. So the threshold that we have, which is 1.6 watts of energy per kilogram of body mass, is, is too high. But also, uh, the FCC itself has published, and this is uh, right out of the, uh, from the uh, FCC website. Uh, this is, you can download this as a PDF from my website, createhealthyhomes.com. If you click on the left, uh, on articles on EMFs, then that brings you to a portal page that has several links. And if you click on the radio frequency EMF article, uh, then on that one, I actually have a, um, a page there where I review and link to these various, um, uh, this, this particular bulletin. So this is Office of Enver Engineering and Technology Bulletin 65 from 1997. And this is evaluating compliance with FCC guidelines for human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields. So when and I, I direct you to page 67, table one, limits for maximum permissible, permissible exposure for uh, controlled exposure in occupational settings, and then the general population. In, in uh, occupational settings, they, f they said, they found that five milliwatts of energy per sonometer, per square sonometer, is the safe level because above that level there was the there were heating effects on cells. Now a milliwatt is a thousandth of a watt, and a square sonometer is a half inch by a half inch. So they said, well, let's put in a five-fold safety factor for the general public. So the law says that uh, one milliwatt per square sonometer, not five, but one, is the safe level for the general population, for un uncontrolled exposure for the general population, and that's right here for the frequency, one of the frequencies that's used for cell phones, right. and a little bit lower than that for one of the other frequencies, um, instead of 1,500 uh, megahertz, or uh, eight or 900 megahertz would be 0.5 or 0.6 milliwatt per square centimeter. The problem with that is, if you take that number, that one milliwatt per square centimeter, and you look on a table here, where you can see where that is, and you slide over to the place under the column four, the unit of measurement used by the Europeans, 
and all the other countries in the world, which is not milliwatts per square centimeter, but microwatts per square meter. So they go 1,000 times lower in the numerator and 10,000 times uh, higher in the denominator in terms of square, a square meter, which is three feet by three feet. That number one, which sounds so safe from the FCC guidelines, which is the law of the land in America, balloons to 10 million in the unit of measurement oh used by the rest of the world. So then I link you to this page here from powerwatch.org, which is a watchdog organization in, in uh, the United Kingdom. And I link you to this page, EMF guidance levels. And if you scroll down, you'll see a table. And on this table, this is for 1800 megahertz, which is one of the cell phone frequencies that's used in the US and around the world. Public exposure guidelines, power flux density, which is what we're measuring here. Here's the FCC, USA, Office of Enver uh, Engineering and Technology, both in 65, but now we're in microwatts per meter squared, and there's that number 10 million. But then we look at the, uh, some of these other, con other countries, starting uh, with the organization uh, in Geneva called the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. They're 9 million, so they're similar to the FCC. But here's Belgium, which is 10 times lower than the U.S. Italy, Russia, China, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg are 100 times more restrictive than the U.S., Vienna is 1,000 times more restrictive than the U.S. Salzburg province in Austria is 10,000 times more restrictive, and the European Parliament is 100,000 times more restrictive than the U.S. Why? Well, there are a lot of reasons why. And uh, those reasons have to do with the fact that research is coming out now, thousands of studies, literally thousands of studies around the world, not in the United States, because th that research is not supported in the U.S., by, certainly not by industry, not by our government, nor by academia. Mm. Nobody's doing it. Uh, one or two studies here and there, but, but m the vast majority of it, it's all uh, outside the United States. So the European Parliament has an agency called the Council of Europe. The Council of Europe is a, is a government agency for the European Union, which is 47 countries that does the same thing that our Consumer Product Safety Commission does in the United States. Th this is an organization or an agency that is tasked with evaluating medical procedures and devices for their impact on human health before um, suggesting to the member countries that they approve the use of these devices. So they have a, a committee resolution 1815 published in May of 2011, so it's two and a half years ago now, titled, the potential dangers of electromagnetic fields and their effect on the environment. And they say here that uh, while electrical and electromagnetic fields and certain frequency bands have wholly beneficial effects when applied in medicine, other non-ionizing frequencies, whether from extremely low frequencies, power lines, or certain high frequency waves used in the fields of radar, telecommunications, and mobile telephony, meaning cell phones, appear to have more or less potentially harmful non-thermal biological effects on plants, insects, and animals, as well as the human body, even when exposed to levels that are below the official threshold values. And they, so. Whew, take uh, a breath, sure. <laughs> all right, so they go on to say that the precautionary principle uh, and the as low as reasonably ach achievable principle needs to be applied here. They say that given the context of growing exposure of the population, in particular that of vulnerable groups, such as young people and children, there could uh -huh. be extremely high human high human and economic costs if early warnings are neglected. So, uh, and then they also say that waiting for high levels of scientific and clinical proof before taking action to prevent well-known risks can lead to very high health and economic costs, as was the case with asbestos, leaded petrol, gasoline, and tobacco. Now, it dawned on me about a year ago that the reason why the European Union is recommending what I'm about to review with you. I won't read it all to you, but I'll, I'll cover the highlights. They, you can, they can get that on your website. Yeah, but I want to I want right. to mention a couple of things here. Uh, is because they pay for the health care of their people. The government pays for the health care of their people in all countries outside of the United States, all industrialized countries. They have no profit whatsoever in their health care delivery systems. So they, if they see a crisis looming that's going to cost them money because of more people becoming ill, they want to get ahead of that curve, right. and that's exactly what they're doing with this. So they're recommending that all reasonably me all reasonable measures to reduce electro uh, exposure to electromagnetic fields be taken, especially to radio frequencies from mobile phones, and particularly the exposure to children and young people who seem to be at most most at risk. I from see head pregnant tumors. mothers having cell phones they put near their stomach. 
Uh, I have a, a girlfriend who uh, got breast cancer. She used to hold, have the phone right here. We, we, there's a series from the... Uh, we, we need to take a break. We need to take uh, a break. Okay. I don't want to take a break, but we need to take a break. We'll be right back with Get Healthy the Winter's Way with Orm Miller. Thank you. We're back with Get Healthy the Winter's Way. I am Sharon Winters. My guest is Orm Miller. And all this information that uh, you're listening to is in my book, Get Healthy, uh, The Pure Cure, A Complete Guide to Freeing Your Life from Dangerous Toxins. The chapter on EMFs is a must, must read. And I just wanted to take a minute because today is January 2nd. And it's my other son's birthday. I had one son five days before Christmas and another one six days after Christmas. Uh, I was busy. And so I wanted to just uh, wish my son, Josh Young, a happy, happy birthday. And I love you. And you're awesome. So, Orm. And you, you went over to Josh. Yes, house and his with, lovely and wife, his yeah. new bride, Corinne, and uh, you found and out what some, do we found? Fine. Oh my God! Magnetic fields coming up from under the floor, from current on water pipes uh, in the the ceiling of the uh, basement, I guess, or do they have a garage underneath? A garage, I think. Uh huh. Uh, we find this often. I I don't recommend that people rent uh, or purchase condo units or apartments on the first floor for that reason. But you can always find magnetic fields uh, anywhere in, in um, a condo. Or so you're invaluable. If you're, if you're going to buy a home or you're going to move someplace, for, for, for you to come in and check it out to find out what is going on. I do because that, all the time. Yeah. That, you can't, that you can't fix. Uh, things like in my house, you, you can fix. If, if you have a single ho family home, you can fix current on the water pipes and uh, on the grounding system, uh, yes, and, and wiring errors. Uh, it's, you can't do, and you can do that in a, a condo unit if, if the wiring error is in the wiring within the unit. Um, and I've done that. Well, I haven't, but I've worked with electricians who do. But I've identified it, and then I return with an electrician if I find things that need to be uh, okay. addressed. But should we get back to the, <sighs> the wireless and the cell phones? Yeah, let's get, yeah, and, and I want to talk about cordless phones because I see yeah. everybody just is mad on cordless phones. Well, all right, one of the recommendations by the Council of Europe to 350 million people in 47 countries two and a half years ago is um, raise awareness on potential health risks of DECT wireless telephones, baby monitors, and other domestic appliances, and including Wi-Fi routers, which emit continuous pulse waves. Okay? And it also says, concerning the private use of mobile phones, cell phones, DECT wireless phones, Wi-Fi, uh, and uh, for computers and other wireless devices, such as baby monitors, set preventative thresholds for levels of long-term exposure to microwaves in all indoor areas in accordance with the precautionary principle, not exceeding 0.6 volts per meter, and in the medium term to reduce it to 0.2 volts per meter. Now, according to this chart here, 
0.2 to 0.6 volts per meter is only 100 to 1,000 microwatts per meter squared. Well, if you compare those numbers to the uh, units of me unit of measurement that the FCC says is safe, that's 0 0.0001 milliwatt per square centimeter. So it's it's like several orders of magnitude less than what the FCC considers safe. This is a very big issue in Europe and and around the um, the world now. Well, aren't they? Haven't they um, taken Wi-Fi out of the yes. schooling systems yes. in in Europe? Yes, so let me, let me mention that. So when it says uh, here concerning the protection of children, uh, they say, for children in general and particularly in schools and classrooms, give preference to wired Internet connections and strictly regulate the use of mobile phones by school children on school premises. Now, by the way, this is an article that appeared in the uh, newspaper The Telegraph in London uh, right after the publication of this uh, Council of Europe Committee Resolution 1815. Now, here's another document which came out a year later in 2012. This is the Healthy School Initiative in England, and they mention uh, the Council of Europe's uh, initiative. They also say that in Russia, the Russian National Committee on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection have recommended the use of wired networks in schools and educational institutions rather than wireless broadband systems, including Wi-Fi. And I will tell you that uh, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Russia, uh, Russia Italy, India uh, have all taken are all taking Wi-Fi or have taken Wi-Fi out of their schools. So I ask those individuals who work, who are representing the cell phone industry and also electric utilities that promote uh, smart meters, and anybody who uh, promotes the, uh, you know what the FCC says is being safe uh, for the public. Why would the Europe, if you, if you say that there is no proven harm, which is absolutely ridiculously wrong, um, if they make the claim that there is no evidence that there's any harm below the official threshold value of the SEC, which is totally wrong, but if that's true, then why are these other countries taking Wi-Fi out of these schools? What is, what's prompting them to do that? Yeah. It's not just concern. It's because there is actual hard data right. correlating the uh, the the development of tumors of uh, symptoms and illnesses in children and teachers that is showing up not in everyone but in a certain percentage that is directly related to the uh, the onset of these symptoms is directly related both to the use of these devices but also more cumulatively over the long term okay and and the, the thing is um, what I tell my clients is to consider this like cigarettes, uh, like smoking cigarettes, again, 50 years ago. What we found was that, um, th again, there was a lot of resistance. There was a lot of uh, 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 indications or, or recommendations from government regulatory agencies and from the media that there was no, and from industry, of course, that there was no harm from smoking cigarettes. In fact, it was even recommended by doctors uh, several decades ago. But what they found was that over time, with the cumulative use of, uh, of smoking cigarettes and secondhand smoke, uh, even if you didn't smoke yourself, there was uh, harm to cells that everyone experienced on a cellular level, but that many, most people could compensate for and repair at night when they slept. But there was a certain percentage of people who did gradually develop uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and, and lung can died from lung cancer. And, but that was rever some of that re was reversible when they stopped smoking. That was the good news. Uh, and now we have all these um, uh, policies in place and laws on a state and local level and th that we don't have smoking in, in many public places and so on. We are at the same point, as I mentioned earlier, with this. But as you mentioned at the start of the show, these devices are uh, invisible, odorless, and... Tasteless. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the problem. Everyone is affected. Uh, we know that. The researchers know that. And, and I, I have more to go over, but well, let me just touch on it really quickly here. So the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, headquartered in Wichita, Kansas, is a group of MDs and DOs who... These are physicians who have issued a, a moratorium... Uh, they're recommending a moratorium on smart meter installation nationwide. Talk about smart I, meters. I, I, I will. I will. Okay. And then they also have um, a position paper on electromagnetic and radio frequency fields effect on human health. 
And they also do have something that just came out. These are case studies that were just published. I haven't printed them out yet uh, on the effects of smart meters on health. But then, what is a smart meter? Well, I, 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 I want to finish up on this. <laughs> okay. I, I know, I know. Uh, a smart meter is uh, a new meter, electric meter and water and gas meter, that uh, monitors the usage of electricity. And instead of displaying it uh, on an analog electromechanical uh, or mechanical dial that was present on all the analog meters that people have had for decades, the new smart meters are digital. Uh, they, they, they gather data once an hour, and then they store it, and then they transmit it once a day or twice a day wirelessly uh, to the um, electric utility headquarters, which then um, keeps track of that information for your usage of electricity. And there are also there, there are many advantages from that from their standpoint, but there are many disadvantages as well that, that you know. You can refuse to have a smart meter. Uh, uh, only in certain parts of the country. In California, you can if you are uh, um, a customer of any of the three regulated utilities in California. That would be Pacific Gas and Electric in Northern and Central California, Southern California Edison here in Southern California outside of Los Angeles, and San Diego Gas and Electric. There is in place a an opt-out for those three programs. Uh, and some of the many of the municipal uh, electric utilities, which don't have to do what the California Public Utilities Commission recommends or, or mandates, they also have opt-out provisions. In fact, uh, LADWP just announced that um, for those people who want to opt out of their study program that was initiated last May, they can do so. It's a voluntary program, and they, they will not be charged to opt out. And the state of Vermont, by the way, the utility in the state of Vermont does not require a fee for opting out, but that's a whole other story. So anyway, um, the international, uh, the World Health Organization has now reclassified radio frequencies as a class two carcinogen, and also the Bioinitiative report, which was co-edited by Cindy Sage in Santa Barbara, California, and Professor David Carpenter at the University of Albany in upstate New York five years ago, they reviewed um, 2,000 studies over two th one year, from 2006 to 2007, and uh, uh, published a report on that, and then that was uh, followed up five years later by the Bioinitiative 2012 update, and they mentioned that there is 1,800 more studies that show that there's evidence for damage to sperm and reproduction, evidence that children are more vulnerable, evidence for fetal and neonatal effects, uh, evidence for effects on autism, electrohypersensitivity, effects from cell uh, tower level radio frequency exposure, effects on the blood-brain barrier, brain tumors, as you mentioned, a genotoxicity, toxicity, toxicity to the nervous system, adult and children cancers, including leukemia, Alzheimer's disease, and DNA as a fractal antenna. When it unfurls to transcribe, it's vulnerable to a translation uh, and transcription errors from these low-frequency information-carrying radio waves that are a component of these wireless devices. So all this happens from exposure to these fields, and Cindy Sage did something very clever. She took the level that the FCC said was safe, and um, if you use the unit of measurement that the um, researchers use, it's actually um, microwatts per sonometer squared, so the denominator stays the same, but the numerator changes by a factor of uh, three places of the decimal point. So the safe exposure level is 1,000 microwatts per centimeter squared at um, 1,800 or 1,500 uh, megahertz. And at uh, another frequency, eight or nine, 800 or 900 megahertz, and this is another frequency that the FCC has allowed for cell phone uh, devices, 530 to 600 microwatts per square centimeter is the safe level. So she took that level and she found research, four pages of research, starting at 500 microwatts per square centimeter to 120 here. And then on the next page, the page before that, she goes from 100 down to 8. And on the page before that, she goes from 6 down to 0.5. And on every page here, she has what the research found who did it, what year it was done, and what the level was. That's where, a lot of work. And, and then each of these Depends. lines is color-coded by disease. 
Wow. All right, so there's four pages plus three more. And that, that's all on your website? Well, you can link to their website from my website. This right. is bioinitiative.org. You have to spell it carefully, bioinitiative.org, to get this. This is their color chart. To counter the notion that there is no evidence. There is. It's out right. there. And, so what and, do we do about it? That's right. The, what do we, I was just going to say, you know, uh, on, so I use one of these things that's, that's on my website. It's an air tube. Earphone. It's an earphone. Earphone with an air tube. With an air tube. In the last six inches. So, so there are those who, who, have, who have found that when you plug your, uh, an, air, um, an earphone into your... Here. I got it. Okay. Got it. So into your, your cell phone, then some of these radio frequencies can ride up on the wire and go directly in and concentrate into your ear. So using... Into the side of the brain. An earpiece can be even well, worse. Um, oh, it's debatable. It's all bad. Uh, but yes, <clears throat> over, it's not completely safe. Let's put it that way. And with this plastic tube here, it does stop it from going. It used to be longer, but then the microphone was too far from the mouth, so they shortened this, unfortunately. But nothing gets past this point, although it's right next to my jaw. But I have these ferrite beads that you can put in, and that blocks... Uh, some of the frequencies from riding up. I have one down here near this jack or plug and then another one up near the top. But you're not out of the woods because when you hold this thing at, at arm's length, there is a significant drop-off in, and reduction in the power density because it does drop off exponentially. That is true. But, uh, but there's still a great uh, deal of radio frequencies that are present here. Now, you asked about cordless phones. I want to show with my radio frequency meter here um, what the exposure levels are for a typical self, um, for a particular, uh, well, you know what, we're getting here, we have Wi-Fi in the room here, so, right. but I'm going to, and that's what that crackling sound is that you hear, because we have Wi-Fi on in, in the studio here, okay, so that's there, but I'm going to plug in this and turn on this cordless phone base unit, and I don't even have the handset. It's in the bag there, but I'm just going to show you what happens when I turn this on. I plugged it in. There we go. Okay. So, um, and and this will be at a very high level as far as we're concerned, even um, four or five feet away, not to mention what happens when you put that right next to your head. So the question that people have to ask themselves is, how many cigarettes am I willing to smoke on a daily basis? Right. Because that's what you're doing, uh, and you can repair the damage, but and you may not develop symptoms, but a certain percentage will, just as did with cigarettes. Right. So I've taken out all my cordless phones, and I just have a, a, some phones that we, have the old, the old cord. We can talk about solutions after right. the break. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and stay tuned, because we have some solutions for you. We'll be right back. Kick rocks. Good. Yeah. Kick rocks.
get gone Cause I don't wanna see you no more No more, no more Don't even step a foot on my block So kick rocks, get gone Cause I don't wanna see you no more No more, no more Don't even step a foot on my block We're back with Get Healthy the Winter's Way through the Pure Cure, a complete guide to freeing your life from dangerous toxins. And I am Sharon Winters with my special guest today, which is Orm Miller. This is just fascinating stuff, Orm. I'm, well, when, when you think about it, it's mind-boggling. What, what We've bought a bunch of lies here, and the population is just being... being a victim of all these things, but there are solutions and things that we can do, which is why I wrote my book, because I have 20 areas of concern, and at the end of each chapter, what you can do about it, you know, and on my website, um, I sell these these, uh, air air tubes, earphones, and the other thing I have are these uh, bracelets, which are scalar technology that give you your body coherence so that we're we're protected from some of this i mean i I look around this room and we've got the 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 lights and the wi-fi and all that we've got to protect ourselves i mean the statistics of cancer are one in three and it's going down when i had my cancer i didn't even know anybody that had cancer and all these things that we talk about brain tumor all these illnesses that are all out there and and, you know, I think about all these babies that are born and, you know, with all this stuff in them. It's just so sad what we've done. We've been sold a bill of go- goods here and cell phone companies are making out like a bandit. Well, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, Dr. Carlo, um, he was on the inside, uh, meaning he saw what went on there from the inside. He told us that when he was, uh, he very reluctantly agreed to head that a, six, a seven or eight year, $25 million study that that, um, that was initiated in 1991 by the cell phone trade industry when they approached the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare before it split into education and health and human services. And he, he turned them down in, at first uh, when he was at Columbia University. And then his friend, the assistant secretary of HEW, called him back and said, George, we really want you to run this study. We're going ahead with it, and we don't want anyone else to run it but you. Will you reconsider? So he told us, Dr. Carlo told us that he told his friend a reluctant yes. And then he told us that he was approached by people in the very beginning of his study who said, Dr. Carlo, I understand you're doing this research on cell phones. We'd be glad to, here's our, here are our credentials. We'd be glad to collaborate with you. Uh, and by the way, what outcome would you like? We can provide that for you. This is what he told us. This is, this is what people said to him. This is the kind of, and he said, no, I, you won't be on my team. I, um, so he, he went through with us what happened to him when he said at the end of the seven or eight years, uh, to the uh, people who commissioned the study, I cannot, uh, you cannot say that cell phones are safe based on the research that I have conducted because they cause harm on a cellular level. Uh, and he went through with us uh, over two hours the, everything that he said, said to them and that they found, that there is harm on a cellular level. It's well documented, but his research never saw the light of day because they fired him. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, he went underground. It's a whole long sordid story, but... The point is, these companies have a technology that is wildly popular. Uh, you know, I use it, but I, I use it judiciously, and I'll get into the. But but the point is, you have. You, obviously, we know that those of us who follow this sort of thing, and we know that that industry isn't going to tell us what's going on with these things, and that that's unfortunately true. But right. okay. But when what's really unfortunate is the government regulatory agency, which, which should be our backstop and should. Be in, uh, you know, on our side, they are not. There's a lot of evidence that they. So I won't get into that. Let's just talk about solutions. So what what you need to do is go to Sharon's book, and and read that chapter on electromagnetic fields, and also and you, the name of your book is, the Pure Cure: A Complete Guide to Freeing Your Life from Dangerous Toxins, and the chapter is chapter three: Electromagnetic Smog. And then my website is www.createhealthyhomes.com, and I have several pages on my website that uh, talk about this, uh, articles on EMFs, 
uh, cell phone and radio frequency. Re well, uh, you'll see them on the left-hand side. So, so let's just run down this real quickly. The, the basic rule of thumb for wireless devices is reduce use and increase distance. So I tell people, when I go to a person's home and do an evaluation of their home, uh, no matter what their level of symptoms are, I will uh, make the same recommendations. And I should add, by the way, that 70% that of my clients are already sensitive and symptomatic to EMFs, even though they comprise only 3 to 5% of the population. But we estimate that a third of the population is affected by these things. And we know that everyone is actually affected by them, but up to a third are actually symptomatic and don't know it because the doctors in this country are not connecting the dots. But they are connecting the dots in Europe and Israel and Russia and, Ch and all these other countries. So I, I tell my clients to keep their landline and in their home use a corded telephone throughout the house like we all did right. decades ago. And number three, tell your friends and family, the people who call you the most, to call that number right. first rather than your cell phone so you don't take cell phone calls at home. Uh, when I do, because this is my business number, when people call my business number on my website or my card, it rings on a cell phone because I'm in the field so much at people's homes. So when I'm at home, and I don't get good reception in the canyon that I live in anyway, uh, so I tell people, can I call you right back? And I get the number and I pick up my I corded, land, corded landline right on my desk and I call from that. Right. Uh, and then and do not use... Your, your phone or have your phone near your bed. Just put it in another room. And the reason you don't want your phone is an alarm clock overnight without putting it in airplane mode is because cell phones are programmed to send out a beacon signal every few minutes to tell the nearest cell tower that they're on and they're ready, they're on standby ready for a call. I won't go into the details, but that's how the tower can find you because only one tower knows where you are. All right, and, and the only reason that they can do that without overwhelming the system, trying to send out a signal for every phone to ring, every time a phone call comes for every customer of a particular carrier, the phones have to send out a beacon signal. So you, you can put it in airplane mode. Same thing for uh, one of these electronic tablets that you put in front of your baby to let them watch a video. Put it in airplane mode because it is sending out a, a signal looking for a Wi-Fi router every four or five seconds. Same thing with your laptop. Use an Ethernet cable for your laptop and then right. and then turn off the Wi-Fi and there are different ways of doing that depending on what kind of computer you have. Same thing with your router. You once you have uh, once you don't need the Wi-Fi in your house because you have Ethernet cables and these network extenders that we talked about earlier, then you need to you need to manually turn off the Wi-Fi on your router, which you can do through any computer that you're connected that's connected to it with an Ethernet cable from anywhere in the house. Bring up your browser, type in the, the numbers that go with that router uh, to get into the control panel, which then comes up. You have to type in the username and password, and then you can turn off the Wi-Fi. And I, I help my clients do that. I teach them how to do it. You can call up the manufacturer of the router to find out how to do this. It's in the manual. So it's a little complicated for some people, but then it's not like it, it's not transmitting. The analogy that I use is your cordless phone base unit is uh, and your Wi-Fi router and baby monitors are like an ashtray with four or five burning lit cigarettes filling the room with smoke all the time, okay? And, and as far as these uh, chips and pendants and harmonizers are concerned, I, I'm not opposed to them because they do reduce the inflammation in tissues. According to thermography, you have blues and greens instead of reds and yellows. Um, there's less uh, stacking of blood cells um, uh, called Rouleau formation, which is a sign of s oxidative stress. And there's also uh, less DNA damage on rats. And so uh, there is evidence that they do some good, but we don't say use that as your, your sole and exclusive way of protecting yourself. We say uh, reduce use of these devices and then use these uh, chips as a uh, um, backup. backup. Right. So you can get all this information on my website and Sharon's book. Um, but, you know, the basic thing is just detoxify your house and see how you feel. You will notice that you feel better. It's amazing. And and then we haven't even gotten into electric. We did in the beginning, but I want to get more into it on another. Well, uh, the time. the other thing that, 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 that I realize fields. is that you know the the Earth has a, a, the Schulman resonance, which is which is a frequency, and we're supposed to be in harmony with that. And all this EMF is changing our frequencies. It's to, interfering to, with that. Yes. With with the Earth significantly, right? No wonder we, we're in chaos. And well, we're all frenetic because we yeah. are not grounded. 
Well, you know, one of the things I do, and, and also I have all these little rituals that I do, but I go outside and connect with the earth. Right. And I just bare feet, you know, especially, you know, a great jet, one of my things in, in my book on jet lag formulas, and no matter where you go, where you fly to, if I, get to the, if it's the ocean or the beach or, or some land and take your shoes off and ground so that you connect with that frequency of where you, where you are. And it's amazing. People call me up and they go, that really worked. That's really bizarre. Uh, yes. And the earthing pad is, again, something that I recommend. Right. We recommend. Many right. of us I sleep do. on an earthing pad. But, but you don't want to do that if you have high electric fields from man-made sources in your walls because uh, electric fields, which I w we will go into in another um, interview, uh, come from voltage, not current. So when you turn the lights off, you still have that those electric fields coming do you up. Have, do you have that white wire to show uh, that? Yes. So That's when you, pretty, all right, pretty. When you plug this in, and I turn on this light here, and I turn on this device here, it shows that we have voltage. But when I turn the light off, the voltage is still there because the pressure is still here up to the switch, just like water in a, a garden right. hose. Right. When you turn on the spigot, that's like turning on the breaker. That pressure is there till the other end, to the right. other end where the nozzle is. The nozzle is like this. Now the water's flowing out. Now it's not, but the pressure is still here. So that voltage field comes out into the room, not only from the wires that you plug in, but also from the plastic jacketed. Uh, Romex wires in the wall, like at your house, and they encompass the bed because it comes out six feet. So every cell in your body has atoms and molecules that have electrons and protons that are charged negatively or positively that, that are attracted and repulsed from this field because it comes out as a positive field and then collapses, then a negative field, then collapses. S 120 times a second because it's the sine wave, 60 times a second, and this field comes out. And you can't measure it with um, a Gauss meter. And the electric field setting on the tri-field meter is not sensitive enough to pick this up. You need to use the body voltage method or a more sophisticated, um, uh, sensitive electric field meter. So we actually measure this, as we did in your house, with the body voltage method. And then we sh I showed you which circuits to shut off, which you did manually for a while. And then the electrician came and put in a, sh a, a shutoff switch for you that's, right. that's convenient. And then you sleep like you're camping, and you don't have that agitation. That's it's why you. It, it's amazing. And it's absolutely amazing. So read comments from clients on my website, and you'll see clients who have noticed this. Right. So that's. So these well, are things that people can well, do for themselves. Thank you for making me feel better. <laughs> it's great. So uh, obviously, if you're interested in getting to Orm and having him come to your home, and uh, checking it out, I think it's real important. I mean, our living. Uh, the toxins in our home, we need to clean that up. You can go to his website, which is createhealthyhomes.com. Is yes. that right? That's createhealthyhomes.com. Right. And uh, there's tons and tons of information on his book. And or on my website. I mean, on his website. And, and on my website is my book, Get, uh, Get Healthy. The Winter's Way. My website is wintersway.com, W-Y-N-T-E-R-S. And I've got several different types of these air tube air pieces uh, for your phone. I also have the scalar bracelets and pendants and all type of things to protect you. We need to protect ourselves, our friends, and people that we care about. It is so important, you know, and that's what this show is about, is to give you back your power that's been taken away from us that we didn't even know was taken away from us. So I want you all to be healthy and spread the word. And if you like this show uh, and what, what I'm about and what I'm doing and what I'm trying to, to get across with all my, my special guests here, please spread the word. It's really important so that we can create a, a healthier environment. Or... Um, you, you are a blessing, and I'm so blessed to Thank know you, you and have you here with me and um, make my home a better place and my children's home a better place. We and work with I, families one house at a time. That's, yeah, that's what we do. Right. So any, anything that you want to share before we leave, we've got another minute that, that you could 
share that you think is that we didn't touch on? Uh, well, just briefly on smart meters, uh, that actually has a bit of a silver lining in that it's a- awakening people to the dangers of EMFs, number one. And number two, it's, it's, it's getting people to, to call building biologists around the country. And by the way, if you go to hbelc.org, which is the website of the Building Biology Institute, um, you'll, you, you'll find there on the right, there's a link to their page that has a, a list of building biologists around the country. When you get to that page where you see the table, which is alphabetized by the last name of, of people who are certified building biologists, and I'm, I'm in there, then you click on the column for state slash country, and it resorts the page by state. So then you can look and see right. where you are in the country or outside the country, right. in Canada. So they're, they're all over the world. Right. So where, wherever you are, you can probably find a building but, biologist to come in. And But we also uh, work with people long distance uh, who don't have a building biologist. Right. And, and you can do a lot of this on the phone, too. Yes, and, I do. And, 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 and guide people. I, I actually tell them which meters to buy. Then, then I call them back. I teach them how to use them. So they're my eyes and ears. They give me information. And then uh, have an electrician come back, and I tell them what to do. So... Uh, become educated on this. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you so much. You've been a delight and so informative, and I hope you enjoyed this. And let me know, will you? Please, please let me know. Anyway, this is Sharon Winters with Get Healthy the Winters Way through the Pure Cure Complete Guide to Freeing Your Life from Dangerous Toxins. My guest today was Orm Miller, a building biologist. And to your health. Namaste. And happy birthday, Josh. Happy, happy birthday. I love you. See you soon. Bye. Just do my, just do my, just do my, just do